other stuff we're going over today. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, when we're looking at a problem like this, guys, seriously, I'll give you another pen or pencil if you need. Just put it away. Just put it away. We don't need that right now. Um, again, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be using the explicit formula. Okay. Now, in this case, though, the problem that we have is we know what a sub 10 is, right? And we're trying to figure out what a sub 8 is, right? But the problem is we don't know what a sub 1 is. Correct? Right. Ever see that? So the problem, what we can do is we can go ahead and plug in some values to be able to, um, we can plug in our information to be able to find out what a sub 1 is. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. The first way is let's figure out what a sub 1 is. Because if we can figure out what a sub 1 is, then we can plug in a sub 1, r, and then find a sub 8. So I know a sub 10. Um, I know what a sub 10 is. I do not know what a sub 1 is. I know the rate, which is negative 1 half. And n is going to be 10 minus 1. Now, do I know what a sub 10 is? Yeah, it's 88. 88 equals a sub 1 times um, negative 1 half raised to the ninth power. Okay, So I basically am going to do 2 raised to the ninth power, which would be 512. So therefore, this is 88 equals a to the first over a negative 256. All I basically did is I raised 1 to the ninth power, and I raised 2 to the ninth power. 2 to the ninth power is 256. Since I'm raising a negative number to an odd power, that's going to remain negative. Now, how do I get rid of a fraction? Do you guys remember we did this in solving equations? You multiply by the reciprocal. reciprocal. So let's multiply by negative 256 over 1. And therefore, a sub 1 equals negative 256 times 88. Um, so in, when, you, when you flip it around, the, the, the negative 1 becomes positive? Or is it all backwards? What? Negative 1 over 256, right? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter where the negative goes. It could be in the numerator denominator. It's not going to matter. So therefore, our final answer is 22,528. Now, the reason why identifying a sub 1, the reason why identifying a sub 1 can be important is because now I can go back to my formula. I want to figure out what the eighth term is, right? So if I go a to the eighth, equals, I now know what a sub 1 is, which is 22,528 times my ratio, which is negative 1 half, raised to the 8 minus 1. Do you guys see how now I have all the information I needed? So I just plugged in what information I had to find out a sub 1. Once I know what a sub 1 is, I can now plug it back into my formula. So now, this is basically going to be um, 2 raised to the 7th, so it's 128. So I have a to the 8th equals, is that a negative? Yeah, it's a negative, right? So negative 22,528 times, this becomes a negative 128. So now when I multiply them, I'm basically taking negative 22,528 and dividing it by 128, which a to the 8th is going to equal negative 176. Any questions? Zeph, no questions? 